let's take our Bibles as we go forward here. We're in 2 Timothy chapter 2, a very common set of verses. just want to direct your attention to, once again, 2 Timothy chapter 2. We'll be looking at the first six verses here. I want to talk about the actions of faithfulness in our remaining time here. The actions of faithfulness. We are learning as we are working with men and teaching men who are born again how to reach out with the gospel to others. We're learning that our ministry will always end with the last faithful man. No matter what I do in ministry, unless I reproduce myself, in another faithful person, my ministry will end at some point in the last faithful person that I'm dealing with. And that's become a great challenge to me because when we first started ministry in our small town of Maasai, I was trying to reach out to as many people as I could, try to get as many disciples, and for a time I had over 10 men that I was trying to connect with every week. And it was good, but I found it turned into a lot of busyness. And I was so busy trying to go between one to the other that I had to stop one day and realize, are these men faithful? What does it mean to have a faithful man? And we see that here in this section here. The Apostle Paul talking to Timothy says, Thou therefore, my son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, Let's just look at these two verses to begin with, and we'll start with a word of prayer. Lord, I thank you for your word. I pray that you would open it to our understanding this evening, that you would help me to speak clearly, that you would amplify those thoughts that you would have amplified. Lord, would you show us some clear application of what it means to be faithful, how we can be faithful to you and be faithful to the ministry that you've called us to. pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. The actions of faithfulness. The Apostle Paul, as he writes to his son in the faith, Timothy, he starts off, he says, be strong. Now, notice here, he says, thou therefore my son, he calls him his son, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. This is very important because if we're trying to be strong in anything else but the grace of our Savior, Jesus Christ, we will find that we will quickly come to the end of ourselves. I find this often in ministry that I get excited about meeting with people, and as I said, I had about 10 guys, and I'm pouring myself into this guy and this guy and running here and there, and I was happy, but I was exhausted, and then I realized after a few months in working with these guys, I say a few months, it was probably about six to eight months that half of these guys really weren't faithful to do anything with what they were learning. They were just enjoying the time together, and it was, it was good. I mean, I enjoyed the time just to sit down with an open Bible with them. That was wonderful. But I really had to come to the grips with this fact that for someone to be faithful, first of all, you must be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Because this word, be strong, it has this connotation of be empowered. It doesn't mean be strong yourself but, or pull up your bootstraps and just go to the front. It means be empowered. It's in this continuous action, this continuous tense. Be empowered through the grace that is in Christ Jesus. And this is what Jesus has done, God's grace, not your own ability. Now, the problem we see in Timothy, um, his context there, the Apostle Paul is warning him there are many people that were um, striving about debate. They were strong in debate and disputations. We see that in verse 14. He says, of these things, put them in remembrance, charging them before the Lord, that they strive not about words to no profit, but to the subverting of the hearers. So there are many people that are strong in debate and disputation, strong in arguments, but what should we be strong in? The solution is verse 15. It says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So if you want to be a faithful person, if you're looking to invest in a faithful person, you have to understand that We must look for individuals that are strong in the grace of God. If you want to be faithful to the Lord, you must rest on his grace and not your own abilities, your own work. Rest on his words, not your own thinking or disputations. Now, God has poured out his life. He poured out the life of his son so that you might be rich, so that you might have the righteousness of Jesus Christ. And we see that in this... um, In... 2 Timothy chapter 2, it is the same thinking that we see also in Ephesians chapter 6 
in verse 10 with the armor of God. Ephesians 6 and verse 10 says, Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. So what are we strong in? The power of the might of God. We're strong in the Lord. Thou therefore, my son, 2 Timothy 2, verse 1, be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. So when we understand the grace of God, that's everything that Jesus has done for us. It's everything that we receive from God because of the finished work of Jesus Christ on the cross. And when we have that foundation, then in verse number 2, it says, and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also. Now, we are looking for men who are strong in the grace of God. What does that mean? That they are confident in their salvation. They're not wondering, uh, they're not wondering today if they're born again and tomorrow they're going to lose their salvation. We're looking for individuals who say, I know that I'm born again. Or if, you know, we're preaching the gospel to every creature. We want to see everyone come to Christ. But as we're preaching to a lost world, we're at the same time, we're looking for men that are born again, that we can encourage and say, be strong in the grace of God and help us multiply this message of the gospel. And we see that there are many false teachers. Many have turned away from boldly preaching the gospel, but um, Timothy was entrusted with the truth. If you look at uh, 2 Timothy, yeah, 2 Timothy chapter number 1 and verse 13, Paul says, Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus. That good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us. So the form of sound words is what the Apostle Paul gave to Timothy. And specifically, he's talking about the gospel. He entrusted Timothy with the gospel. And he sent Timothy on a task to be able to instruct others. The Apostle Paul was a starter. He was one who came in and he laid the foundation and other people built thereon. And Timothy was a man that he would leave behind in places that would be able to teach that form of sound doctrine, to be able to teach upon the foundation of salvation. And we see here that the Apostle Paul left him with this instruction that he was not alone in this work but that he was to look for other faithful men that could help him to be able to build together. And I say this because this is where we're at in ministry, is we are looking for men. We're trying to help other men who are born again, or first of all, to see people come to Christ, be born again, and to see those that are born again to be strong in the gospel. And from there, to be able to take the message that they've received, the things that they've learned, and be able to commit those to other faithful men. And we see here some of the actions of faithfulness. First of all, be strong. And secondly, communicate the gospel. That's what it's talking about in verse number two. The things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses, the same commit thou to faithful men. And so I think of these two phrases, the things, the same. What are they supposed to communicate to others? The same things that they've received for themselves. Now this is the beauty of, of mission work, the beauty of church planning is that we don't have to create a different message for each different locale. We don't have to go into a new place and wonder, oh, what are we going to use that's going to be effective in this land? We have the message that's effective. The Apostle Paul said, for I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation unto all who will believe unto the Jew first and also unto the Greek. In that time of, the, um, of this world, there were two main people groups, the Jews who honored God and the Greeks who honored knowledge. We didn't know anything about God. And we see that today around this world that God has given us one message. It's the gospel. Whenever I go into a new place, I have opportunity to travel to many places inside of Myanmar. And I'm always looking for, is there someone here that is preaching the gospel? If there is someone preaching the gospel, I want to find them. I want to encourage them. I want to see what's happening. And, and I will be able to understand someone on this foundation of the gospel. I found this very helpful. When I meet someone who says, oh, I'm serving God, I love God, I have a church over here, I have this ministry over here, what I want to hear about them is, can you tell me the gospel? Can you tell me how has the gospel changed your life? Are you strong in the grace of God? Are you strong in the gospel? Because if you have that foundation, the Bible says that is the foundation for faithfulness. And that foundation allows you then to take the things that you've heard and to commit those to others, to communicate the gospel. Number one, be strong. 
Number two, communicate the gospel. As I said, the things that you've already heard, the same things, commit thou to faithful men. And this is the key. These faithful men are those that are able to teach others also. And as I mentioned before, discipleship always ends with the last faithful man. Now, there are four examples of faithfulness given here, and I don't have a lot of time this evening, but I just want to leave you with these examples because I found them to be helpful as I'm trying to be a faithful preacher of the gospel myself and look for men that I can train to be faithful witnesses, that together we can multiply the gospel throughout our region in Thailand and Myanmar. I'm noticing that there are examples of faithfulness given to us here in 2 Timothy chapter 2. We see those examples in verse number 3 down to verse number 6. It says in verse number 3, Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now, I should say the first example we see before we get to the soldier is the example of a son. You know, a son has a relationship with a father. This example of faithfulness is talking about the relationship, to be faithful in the relationship that you have with your heavenly father, your relationship with Christ. Be strong in the grace that is in Christ Jesus. Just remind yourself that my relationship with God is not dependent upon my works. It's not dependent on anything that I do. It's all by the grace of Jesus Christ. And secondly, the second example of faithfulness is a soldier in verse number 3 and 4. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. Now a soldier is an example to us of dedication and endurance. A soldier sets aside many of his own priorities and plans in order that he would please him who has called him to be a soldier. You know, soldiers don't determine what haircut they have or what clothes they wear on the, the front lines. They don't determine what they're going to eat for their next meal. It's all determined for them. They don't determine what they do, when to shoot. All of that's given to them, all of these instructions. And we see here in verse 4, No man that warreth entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that me, he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. This is a great example for us in faithfulness that faithfulness requires dedication to our captain in chief, the Lord Jesus Christ. It requires endurance. You know, there are many things that we have to do on the mission field that you know, are different from what you may be doing here in the U.S. as far as you know, we have different culture that we're dealing with. But at the end of the day, a lot of the things that we have to endure are very similar to the things that you endure day after day. You know, just the common everyday ailments that we go through or parenting woes or, you know, you name it. Uh, we're, we're regular people. And we see there's much dedication that's needed. And there's also discipline. We see the discipline of an athlete in verse number five. It says, and if a man also strive for masteries, it's talking about an athletic competition, strive for masteries, yet is he not crowned except he strive lawfully. There's great discipline that's needed as an athlete. In the Apostle Paul's day, there was a lot of um, fighting, I would say like uh, wrestling matches that would take place. And this kind of, I believe, what was in his mind, talking about those that were wrestling, trying to achieve the mastery here, they had to strive lawfully. They had to wrestle according to the rules or they'd be disqualified. So we have the son, we have the soldier, we have an athlete that's a picture of discipline. We have the farmer, in verse number six, called the husbandman. The husbandman that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. You think of the farmer, and you know, in this, this area in Iowa, you have a lot of corn that's grown, and it's, it takes a lot of work to grow a crop. You know, for me, my, both of my parents were dairy farmers, and so they, they were raising Holsteins, and then they had corn on the side and a little bit of uh, soybeans or some sort of a winter wheat or something they were growing. I, I grew up in upstate New York, so the topography is a little bit different. They're not too, too much different from Iowa, but um, their farms were a lot smaller. But if you think about this, the husbandmen um, in Bible days there is speaking more of probably like a grape harvest than anything else, but it takes a lot of work to be a farmer. And it takes a lot of faith, a lot of patience, because you're investing now for something that you will receive down the road. It takes a lot of patience, and determination. And I think about these four examples. The son, who is faithful in his relationship. The soldier, who is faithful in his dedication and endurance. The athlete, who is faith faithful in discipline. And the farmer, who is faithful in patience and determination. And I think about this in application. If we are to be faithful to the Lord, and we are to look for faithful men who can multiply the witness of the gospel, 
we need to really think about God's instruction. We need to be faithful to hear his words. We need to be thinking about our direction. Think about, am I walking after the Lord in these ways myself? Um, Walking in God's way, you know, I think of the son, you know, thinking about his relationship to the father and what is the father given. The soldier, um, he doesn't, as I said, he doesn't make up his own agenda, but he's following the will of his captain. The athlete is, is following after he's disciplined because he has a, an achievement to, to meet. Uh, the farmer, he's thinking about every action now as reaping a harvest later on. And, you know, I think of it this way, in this application, to be a faithful man, we want to listen to God's instruction to hear Secondly, to, to think about your direction. Is the step that I'm taking today faithful to where God is leading me? And third, plan your action to do what is right. Now, in 2 Timothy chapter 2, if you look further down in verse number 22, it says, Flee also youthful lust, but follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace with them that call on the Lord out of a pure heart. You know, God always gives us a direction to follow. And one of the things that helps in this area of faithfulness is having some faithful examples to look to. Do you see here that it's talking about fleeing youthful us? You know, we all have youthful us inside of us, even if we're older. But what should we do? We flee youthful us and we follow righteousness, faith, charity, peace. And who do we follow with? It says, with them that call out of the, the call on the Lord out of a pure heart. One of the things I want to encourage you with that I've been encouraged with is God has other faithful men out there and he has given you faithful examples that are around you that you can go with, that you can follow with and they can be an example together of what faithfulness is and to follow with them the call of the Lord, call on the Lord out of a pure heart. So I explain that to you just a little bit of this instruction to the to Timothy from the Apostle Paul to be strong, to communicate the gospel in these four examples of faithfulness. And I share that because in ministry right now, we are investing heavily in men and praying that they would be faithful to the Lord. And if you were to ask me, what's one thing that we can pray for in your ministry that would summarize your needs? I would say pray for faithfulness. Pray for faithfulness in our lives, that we would be faithful to the Lord in these areas. But pray also for the faithfulness of three men. Brother Moong, Brother, Brother Moong is a farmer. Brother Heaven is a teacher. And Brother Luke is a welder, jack-of-all-trades kind of handyman guy. And um, these three men have become the keys of reaching out with the gospel to others. And we're praying for the Lord to give us new families. We're praying for the Lord to lead others to Christ. We're actively involved in sharing the gospel and doing many things, but... We, we need to see these men be faithful and take the next step. We need to see them understand God's call in their life and follow after that. And as we're doing that, would you pray for faithfulness? Would you pray that God would, would allow us to be faithful to the call he's placed in our lives? And I want to say thank you for your faithfulness over all these years. You know, we have very little opportunity as far as seeing you face to face. You know, it's been seven plus years since we've been here. But I thank you for your faithfulness in praying for us, your faithfulness in giving, your faithfulness in trusting the Lord that his word will not return void wherever it's being preached around this world. Thank you for that. Thank you for this opportunity to give and up. I just want to encourage you. God is doing great things. And many days we're somewhat overwhelmed with all the opportunities that are around us. And we're trusting the Lord, though, that through faithful men that God will multiply the work. He'll lead us one person at a time. So thank you all. Let's trust the Lord to continue to use us in his harvest field. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for your word, that you are faithfulness. You are faithful. You are really the definition of faithfulness, Lord. I I thank you for um, the pastor and his family, for the church, for each member, Lord, that makes up this, this church that shines for you. Lord, I thank you for their faithfulness to the harvest. Lord, the heart that you've given them for your, your word, for your truth. And, and Lord, I thank you for the, the part that they play in seeing the gospel going to Thailand and Myanmar. Would you, would you bless and strengthen them, Lord, and meet their needs? Would you continue to, to raise up 
um, faithful men that can be sent out of this church, Lord, that would um, be an even greater witness of what you're doing. And we love you. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.